the low levels of water at the Ndakaini Dam in Thika continue to puzzle many, even as the heavy rains continue pounding and flooding different parts of the country. There is no reprieve for Nairobi residents who are set to continue experiencing water rationing until the water levels at Ndakaini Dam improve. On News Center this morning, we have been taking a look at the water situation in the country with a special focus that is the Ndakaini Dam water levels and what the government is doing so far to ensure Kenyans access clean and safe water. Right, welcome back to News Center. Thank you very much for staying with us. We, uh, of course, are continuing with our conversation uh, to do with uh, water coverage here in the country. I'm seeing quite a number of tweets coming through. I'll sample them in a few minutes. We're asking you, remember, what do you think ails the Ndakaini Dam? Uh, but apart from that, I'm also seeing quite a number of Kenyans just also just giving and chiming in into the conversation to do with the water coverage. Keep it coming. I'll, I'll sample them as we continue with the show. Right now, I want to continue with our conversation with the CS4 water and sanitation that is of course is Simon Chelugui thank you sir for staying with us all right now um, let's go to the little matter of uh, water rationing um, and you said correctly that um, you know at least by the end of June we should be having a 60% uh, capacity at the dam what will that mean uh, for residents of Nairobi uh, what it means for residents of Nairobi is, is uh, currently as we speak uh, um, uh, Chalo mm -hmm. is uh, we are, we are pumping at our maximum capacity mm -hmm. through Nairobi Water and Sewerage. Mm -hmm. uh, the installed capacity mm -hmm. in Nairobi or equipments at Ndagaini and the rest at Ngedu, mm -hmm. Kabete, Gigiri is 526 million liters per day. Per day. That is the installed infrastructural right. capacity. And the pipe work can only support that. Mm -hmm. So. As, we are, as it continues to rain and uh, we are witnessing a lot of floods, mm -hmm. we are pumping this water from River Chania mm -hmm. and uh, directly transferring that water to Ndakaini treatment, mm -hmm. uh, to Ngedu treatment works, mm -hmm. where thereafter it is pumped 52 kilometers mm -hmm. to Kigiri. Mm -hmm. We have a distribution uh, tank which pumps to part of uh, west, uh, parts of Upper Hill and parts of CBD, mm -hmm. the airport, and some of the waters uh, are pumped to EPZ mm -hmm. in uh, the river. Right. In June, this dam will be filled up. And therefore, what it means is that we can only sustain the same 526, because mm -hmm. we will now open the, and release some water to regulate the river, which by then will have uh, gone down in terms of flow. Mm -hmm. So the rationing will, be conti will continue. So Nairobians need to understand that it is not the dam that is affecting or determining the region. Mm -hmm. It is the capacity, right. the infrastructural capacity installed mm -hmm. in Nairobi. To deliver the water. To, to, to deliver the water. the water. Whether it rains day or night, mm -hmm. we can only do 5.6 million liters. All right. Are there plans to increase the capacity? Yes. Of now that's, where I, that's now the most interesting part. Right. Currently, right. we are doing 140 million liters of water northern collector tunnel where we are co connecting three rivers and we are transferring that water 5.4 kilometers to the same Dakaini mm -hmm. and then there's another channel that is uh, under construction 95 percent called Kigoro treatment works mm -hmm. which will augment what's happening at Ngedu mm -hmm. so that we are able to now deliver more another 140 mm -hmm. uh, million liters of water remember Nairobi demand of the, the the, the peak demand for Nairobi is 770 million liters. A day. And currently, yes, and yes. currently we are doing 526 million. Mm -hmm. So we have a shortfall of about 250 million mm -hmm. liters. Mm -hmm. So with 140 million coming from uh, Northern Collector Tunnel and Kigoro, we will reduce, we will reduce the gap. Mm. And therefore what it will mean in 2019, December, when all these works are done, we, those who are getting two deliveries per day will now get four. Okay. And those who are getting single delivery or uh, connection mm -hmm. per day mm -hmm. will now get 
two connections or two deliveries right. per day. So and the rationing will reduce. And it's interesting that you say that because even looking at the tweets that are coming through, many Kenyans are just asking, why are we being, why is water being rationed? Yet there's all this water that yes. we're seeing flooding yes. at the entire place. So yes. uh, where are we? How long is it, is that, is it going to take until we have the uh, infrastructural development uh, increased to allow more capacity into the into the into Nairobi? Currently, we have uh, currently we have about four major projects, mm -hmm. uh, which are at, at various stages of implementation. Mm -hmm. Number one, I've told you, is Northern Collector Tunnel. Yes. This is uh, almost 35 percent. We are doing connecting three rivers, mm -hmm. 14 kilometers underground mm -hmm. in part of uh, Kauru, in uh, part of uh, Gat, uh, um, the, those sites of uh, Muranga. Mm -hmm. And then we pump the same water to Ndakaini, and then there is a treatment works, and then we pipe the same water all the way to Nairobi 52. Mm -hmm. There is a pipeline ongoing. Next month, mm -hmm. His Excellency the President will be launching Karimenu Dam. This will give us another 70 million litres of water per day. Mm -hmm. This dam will take another four years. So the only, the immediate solution for Nairobi, which will uh, reduce or minimise the rationing, is this uh, Northern Collector Tunnel. Mm. But beyond the 2019, mm -hmm. we have this uh, Karimenu Dam, we, which is, we have already awarded. It was awarded last year. We are now working on the land compensation. Mm -hmm. The contractor is already on site, mm -hmm. ready to start the work. Right. There is Ruiru Dam, which is also expected to bring in another 120 million liters mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. And uh, this dam is already awarded. Uh, we are working on compensating the land owners. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, uh, advertised under EPCF, mm -hmm engineering, procurement, construction, and finance model mm -hmm. of funding. And we are going to do uh, Gate Dam, and we are going to do Maragua Dam, right. which will increase again the water flow in Nairobi. All right. But in addition to that, we need to again manage the waste management. There is so much water which will be flowing to Nairobi, mm -hmm. and the next crisis will be management of waste. Yes. And therefore, we have already also advertised for... Uh, already we have trunk lines going to Dandora Treatment Works. Mm -hmm. We are now doing the laterals so that all the waters that are used can be collected and disposed in a hygienic way. Right. And everything that you're talking about seems that, like, the things that should have happened before. How come they, you know, this is the time that, you know, we're seeing, you know, an agitation or, you know, some efforts, a lot of efforts being done uh, to ensure that all these things you're talking about, you know, to do with the distribution are actually enhanced? Uh, you know, I would say uh, Minister of Water and, uh, and Sanitation, mm -hmm. Uh, in 1963, it was a department under Minister of Agriculture. And then there was GAP 372, mm -hmm. which was uh, running, and uh, th that's where it was managed under that act mm -hmm. or that CAP. Now, in 2002, we started seeing reforms, uh, legal institutional reforms yeah. that led us to where we are now. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, after realizing all the benefits, we, co we saw separation of uh, policy, separation of water resource mm -hmm. uh, management, mm -hmm. and separation of regulation, and also in, uh, water service provision. Mm -hmm. Now, all these now caused, the there was a lot of uh, now in uh, increased activity to increase the coverage. Currently, as we're speaking, uh, we have a 60% national coverage. Mm -hmm. Our target is to give Kenyans, uh, to give 80% of Kenyans water in three years. Okay. And all these are based on the reforms that were, uh, were undertaken in 2002 mm. and the 2016 new act. All right. Mm. All right. So uh, from the Indakaini Dam and everything we've talked about, we also want to focus on another issue, which is, of course, rain harvesting. And before we hear the sentiments of the CS, we just want to hear what Kenyans, uh, I think it's in Kuala County, had to say about this. Mimi sasa la mvua hii na kunyaji maji huku kwale hatuna kabisa kwa sababu mvua ni nyingi lakini sehemu za kwale huko matuga kwenye friji mengine inaitwa maji tunashangaa maji ya kuna mvua hata leo serikali yetu ya county ni vipi tafuta tupate jambo mwafaka angalau tunge maji pia wakati wakiangaza tu na maji ya kutosha hata kama pale marere maji hamna na ndio supply ya kwale county ya pia Mombasa county mimi na tatizo na serikali yetu kwa sababu hivi sasa Tunaona mvua ina mwaika ya kutosha lakini maji inaenda tu bure na ingia tu kwa mito na ingia tu kwa manini kwa ma sewage lakini sioni jambo lolote ambalo linafanyika at least ku ku haya maji 
angalau tungekuwa tuko na mahali angalau tunafikiwa kama mabwawa wanayai kwa maji ndo at least wakati wa kiangazi pia maji haya haya tuwe tunayatamani area hii ya kwale iko na mvua ya kutosha lakini inatatiza time kama hii kuna watu ambao hata saa hizi wana shida ya, ya maji na maji haya haya yangekuwa yanashikika angalau yakatumika hata baadaye sio ni kwa nini maji ya mwaike tu ovyo na ili hali kuna njia nyingi ambazo serikali inaweza kuja nazo ambazo zinaweza kufanya hii maji angalau ikasaidia hata wakati ambapo hakuna All right, so those are the residents of uh, Kwale uh, County just, of course, uh, airing uh, their concerns uh, with regard uh, to uh, the water situation in the county there. Uh, for now, though, before we continue and hear the sentiments of uh, the CS, I just want us to take a look at uh, some of the challenges we understand um, right when it comes to uh, rainwater harvesting all right so the first one inadequate funding low technology adoption and sustainable grants those have been mentioned uh, in different uh, platforms as the challenges and um, of course uh, we'll be hearing the sentiments of the cs with regard to this uh, coming to you CS, um, rainwater harvesting and of course i want also you to react to you know what the residents there are saying this is still this is still the same question that many kenyans across the country are asking that you know there's a lot of water but you know they're not sure if not even in with ndaka in idam or here in nairobi whether other parts of country are able also to just harvest this water oh thank you sir thank you so much um Kuala county uh two weeks ago i and the ps and the cs we went to Kuala to launch nyelani dam mm -hmm one of the projects to, uh, to hand over. Mm -hmm. That had already been commissioned by the president last year, mm -hmm. and we handed over to the county government of Kuala. Mm -hmm. And this is going to support the people of uh, Kin uh, Kinango, uh, down, downstream, and support livelihoods mm -hmm. activities around there. Uh, these activities are being done by Coast Water Service Board. Other than that, we have also uh, the Marere Springs, which supports uh, Kuala Town and also parts of the lower Kuala and Lunga Lunga, is also being expanded. Mm -hmm. Under the ADP program, which is ongoing, we are also uh, 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 rehabilitating mm -hmm. uh, the springs and also the big uh, dam of uh, Mwache Dam, which is uh, going to be ready or launched it's a big dam which will actually produce 186,000 meters cube mm -hmm. per day. Remember, Mombasa water demand per day is 150,000 mm -hmm. meters cube. So mm -hmm. that dam alone can be able to support the entire mm -hmm. city of Mombasa. All right. But this water will be shared between Kwale, Kilifi, and Mombasa. All right. Other parts of the country? On the other parts of the country, of course, you know, in West Pokot, we have Sioi Murun, which is 50%. In Mandera, we are working on the river, Ramu River. We are going to do a project under, funded by ADP. Mm -hmm. uh, consultancy has finished their work. We are advertising in the, in, within, in the, within one month. Mm -hmm. We should be advertising. On Marsabit, we have the Bakuli and Badaza. Mm -hmm. Badaza Dam and Umar Dam in Kitui had a problem, uh, contractual problem. We have resolved, we have paid off the, contract, the previous contractor. Mm -hmm. We are beginning to, f to finalize and complete the works. Mm. And these works will be done again within this financial year. When you go down to Bomet, we have Bosto Dam, which are ready. The, uh, we have, the government has identified a contractor. Okay. Again, that is ready for launch. When you come to Baringo, we have Chemosusu, which is, uh, I think, uh, the treatment works, the dam is complete, treatment works are in place, mm -hmm. is ongoing now, and we have uh, Kabaronet, Itare Dam in Nakuru, is again 43% ongoing. This will support the town of uh, Nakuru. For the other sides of uh, Mombasa, we have also the Msima Springs, mm -hmm. Line 2. Again, the contractor is now ready to move to site. Mm -hmm. We are waiting for uh, logistical issues to finalize, and then we mobilize to site. So nationally, we are also doing studies in Gidino in Meru, and also in parts of Maua, Maua Dam in uh, Darakaniti. We have uh, also proposals to, around Embu Town. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know the famous uh, Thwake Dam, which is the confluence of uh, two big rivers at the borders of Kitui and uh, Makueni, mm. which will support other than irrigation, industrialization. Right, yes. right. What about the northeastern region? Any plans uh, on yes. going there? Yes, of course, you know, northeastern, we have Bute Dam. Mm -hmm. Bute Dam is in Wajia. Mm -hmm. 
in the world we have uh, we have in Garissa uh, our sources are from River Tana mm -hmm. but plans are underway to do a mega dam mm -hmm. uh, on the hills of uh, Tharaganithi called the High Grand Falls this will be the biggest dam in Kenya and this will uh, the water will be transferred through Garissa and downstream and it will also uh, enhance the irrigation project in Galana All and right. Gulalu. All right. So as a CS um, of water and sanitation, wh when do you think, you know, the country will be having um, an almost sufficient supply of water? Talking about, you know, taking a look at the national, um, you know, o o um, an overlook over the national uh, uh, supply. When do you think this will happen? Uh, our promise, our, our target, uh, of course, you know, when this government was elected mm -hmm. and during the last years, uh, the government of Jubilee uh, manifesto indicates that we are doing these 57 dams to augment water supply, to expand coverage. And uh, all these, uh, we are on the race to, to work out. So as a ministry, we are doing now designs. We are implementing that uh, manifesto. And we believe in three years, at least, we have achieved 80%. Mm. And then uh, we continue with the same momentum. Uh, in another five years, we expect to be approaching mm -hmm. a universal coverage. All right. Yes. Of what terms? Of course, the challenge in this is uh, all these uh, projects are financing because water is a capital intensive mm -hmm. uh, investment. Mm -hmm. And we have to also be innovative. And as a ministry, we are advising government on various models that we can use to roll out these projects. Mm -hmm. One of them, of course, is uh, the PPP, which has actually has had low uptakes and we're trying to advise government on how best we can position this uh, mm -hmm. proposed approach mm. to increase the uptake because with that it means we relieve treasury from the financial pressure mm -hmm. we have also about four or five projects ongoing now under epcf uh, and uh, we are contractors source for their own money and they do the works and we just we agree on the time treasury agrees on the time they will they start paying them and right. the rate is agreeable with them. Right. So those are the issues that also affect our momentum. Mm. All right. Um, finally, let's talk about um, something I've also seen somebody ask on Twitter about cartels, you know, in, um, you know, in uh, supply of water with all the great things that the ministry is doing. Mm. Um, you know, what are, you plan what are your plans um, indeed when it comes to people who, um, you know, wouldn't say hold water, but people who uh, sort of like blocks water supply, you know, to Kenyans? You know, cartels exist because of a vacuum, just like illegal trade and also the black market. Sometimes when we have shortfall, as you can see, we have a 40% shortfall. Mm -hmm. So these fellows are trying to do, they benefit, they thrive mm -hmm. on a problem because we have a shortfall. Right. But there's a ministry, even Nairobi Water and Sewerage, has licensed water tankers. tankers. Mm -hmm. And this licensing enables us to check on quality, the source of water, the pricing, and the delivery schedules. And uh, there are also cartels. I know the line between where we are now, Mombasa Road, up to uh, export processing zone. Mm. We have a dedicated line that goes to that area. Mm -hmm. But they complain throughout because despite Nairobi water and sewerage pumping adequate water, mm -hmm daily there are so many legal connections yes. and water vendors who are illegal on the line mm -hmm. and uh, these fellows we have issued a warning and we are working together with interior mm -hmm. and uh, nairobi county and machakos mm -hmm. county and also epza mm -hmm. to see that that line is um, is freed and dedicated to support the manufacturing industries mm -hmm. in export processing zone as you are aware water we, as water, we are a big enabler of the big four. Manufacturing, the biggest manufacturing industries are in Nairobi and part of, and the outskirts of Nairobi. Right. So we would want to really play our, our role as an enabler to support the big four. Because with the big four, this country will move from where we are to the next level. Okay. Manufacturing will increase, health facilities will increase. You can imagine a situation where mm. we have portable clean water 
you know three quarters of our sick or our patients in our hospitals are suffering from waterborne diseases, ranging from bilharzia, cholera, typhoid. If all these people got a potable clean water, mm. you can move away those patients from those hospitals and, it, and reassign, reallocate that uh, expenditure on treatment to now infrastructural development right. like water and other social services. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, CS4, for speaking to us. CS uh, Simon Chilegu, who's the CS4 Water and Sanitation, just shedding light on a number of issues uh, to do with uh, water coverage here in the country. Thank you very much for your time. All right, so we'll be looking at also at uh, your responses at the top of the hour here on News Centre. I've seen that we've had quite a number of tweets, uh, people uh, really chiming in into the conversation. Thank you very much for doing so. Um, all right, so we will look at uh, some tweets here just before we take a short uh, commercial break. All right, let me see if I can see through and uh, give you a number of them. It's taking too long to, uh, <laughs> to load. All right, uh, looking at um, your commitments. All right, uh, Benson Mushiri, you said that. Uh, Benson Mushiri, Maina, you say Ndakaini shouldn't be the only dam supplying water to Nairobi. There should be alternative ways of harvesting water in Nairobi. I am from Muranga and we're still using bowels and jerry cans to go for water. CS, do you want to reply to that, to respond to that? Yes, yes. Uh, saying, they're saying that in Muranga they're still using bowels and jerry cans to go for water, saying that Ndakaini should not be the only dam supplying water uh, to Nairobi. Yes, I've, I've already highlighted yes, yes. before mm -hmm. that there are a number of programs, number of projects mm -hmm. that we are working on. And I believe uh, in the next uh, five years, mm -hmm. we have alternative sources of water to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We should augment what we are receiving now. What we have now. Yes, yeah. for Muranga, I think Muranga will be one of the first counties to be 100% covered. Yes, with we the have, northern. Uh, yes, not northern. That northern collector is coming to Nairobi. to Nairobi, but we have so many CSR activities in Muranga mm -hmm. to support the development, expansion, mm -hmm. last mile connectivity in almost every constituency. Mm. And uh, that was actually a concern that um, you know Muranga residents felt like you know all the water will be coming to Nairobi. So what will they be left with? I think we have enough programs. Mm -hmm. uh, three weeks ago. I was in Muranga, I engaged the leadership, the, both the government, county government mm -hmm. and, the, and the legislators, mm -hmm. both Senate and National Assembly. Right. And we, we, we discussed on, well, we are transferring water from Muranga to Nairobi and Thika and Ruiru mm -hmm. and Kiambu. We are also making plans for them. So we have so many small activities mm -hmm. and we will be also uh, putting a lot of emphasis on them so that uh, we have balanced uh, mm -hmm. and equitable uh, coverage for both the urban city of Nairobi and also the rural mm. areas of Muranga. And these activities will be enough to supply water to them? Yes, from our okay. in, uh, indicators is they will be covered. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, as I told you, mm -hmm. this will be one of the first uh, counties mm -hmm. to be covered 100%. All right, 100%. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, also, looking here, Victor Chesire Kiprop, you say, ask the CS what plans he has for people of Baringo, especially the Kirandich Dam. Yeah, Kirandich Dam is on course. There's, uh, we've awarded mm -hmm. We have a 1.8 billion contract, which was awarded last year. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are finalizing mobilization. The contractor is finalizing mobilization. Mm -hmm. And soon, the, car, the water, there will be about uh, 12 water tanks. Mm -hmm. And in three, two years, the, entire, the, the town of Cabernet, Cabartonjo, mm -hmm. Uh, Tenges and Sacho and these parts of Capacis will be fully covered. All right, interesting. Yes. Another yeah. comment here, Charles Kipkley. Uh, thank you for watching, Charles. He says it's refreshing listening to CS Chelugui on matters of to do with water. He's very articulate and knowledgeable on matters to do with water. Uh, he says, and I hope this will translate to better and sustainable water management practices uh, in Kenya. Another comment uh, here saying, Benson Mushiri say, and those major projects being insisted should be started instantly and not stories. Well, as the CS has outlined, there are um, already in place and the work is, is I, I already think, ongoing. I think the entire government is committed to this. Mm. You know, as an enabler, the president has pronounced himself very clearly mm. on the big four. And as we are now, as yeah. we're speaking now, the president is so concerned that this project must be launched. We are concerned as a government. And we are on the race to ensure that we commission, mm -hmm. we launch. We, we are as a Ministry of Water. 
we have adopted an RRI, Rabbit Results Initiative. And in these 100 days, we are going to do a hundred launch of 100 projects. And the big projects we are also inviting His Excellency the President mm -hmm. to also participate and uh, uh, boost this uh, momentum. All right. So one of them is Karimeno. You will be seeing us soon in Karimeno. Mm -hmm. In the next one month, mm -hmm. we should be launching. And we'll be launching the one of Cabernet. Mm -hmm. We'll be launching the one of Boston. You will be launching Mwache Dam in August once the contractor is identified. Okay. So we are moving. And the small schemes, we are spreading ourselves and making sure that all the projects that have been done and finished must be launched and people benefit from, the, from, them. from them. All right. Yes. Thank you very much, CS, for speaking to us. Many questions there. And I'll continue to sample the views that you've, uh, of course, put out uh, on our Twitter handle. Thank you very much for speaking yes. to us again. All right. So we wanted to take a short commercial break. We're coming back to continue with the show. But also, we'd like to still hear your thoughts on the conversation that I've just had with the CS here. Uh, talk to me. Tell me what um, you think about the discussion. And, of course, I'll sample your views when we come back from this short commercial break. We are entering our second hour of New Centre. Do not go away. We'll be right back. This is KTN News.